Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, we're going to start the program in just a few minutes. So we're just waiting for everyone to join in and um, get connected. So inshallah, in the next few minutes, we'll start the program. Asant.
Assalamu alaikum, um, everybody, and welcome to our um, majlis in honor of uh, in honor of Kushrankal. It's his fortieth uh, day majlis, um, and we're honoured for all of you um, to join us tonight in remembering him and remembering our marhumins. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'd now like to call upon. Uh, we start the program with Hadith Kisa. Um, Hadith Kisa is traditionally we started for a blessing um, in the uh, in the um, event that we're holding in the in the congregation that we're doing. Uh, unfortunately, we can't be at mosque, so we're doing it virtually, and we ask um, Allah to bless this occasion. Um, with his blessings, like he blessed the Ahlul Bayt. So can I now um, call upon um, Asim Fazl from Wanza to start the proceedings of Hadith Sikisa. Asim Bismillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عن جابر بن عبد الله العنصار أنه قال عن فاطمة الزهراء عليه السلام بنت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله قال سمعت فاطمة أنها قالت دخل علي أبي رسول الله في بعض الأيام فقال السلام عليك يا فاطمة فقلت عليك السلام قال إني أجد في بدني ضعفا فقلت له أعيذك بالله يا أبتاه من الضعف فقال يا فاطمة ويتيني بالكساء اليمان فغطيني به فأتيته بالكساء اليمان فغطيته به وصرت أنظر إليه وإذا وجهه يتلأ له كأنه البدر في ليلة تمامه وكماله فما كانت إلا ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسان قد أقبل وقال السلام عليك يا أمه فقلت عليك السلام يا قرة عيني وثمرة فؤادي وقال يا أمه إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة جد رسول الله وقلت نعم إن جدك تحت الكساء فأقبل الحسن نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جده يا رسول الله أتأذن لي أن أدخل معك تحت الكساء وقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا صاحب حوضي قد أذنت لك فدخل معه تحت الكساء فما كانت إلا ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسين قد أقبل وقال السلام عليك يا أمه وقلت عليك السلام يا ولدي ويا قرة عيني وثمرة فؤادي فقال لي يا أمه إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة جد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وقلت نعم إن جدك وأخاك تحت الكساء فدنا الحسين نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جدة السلام عليك يا من اختاره الله أتأذن لي أن أكون معكما تحت الكساء وقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شافع أمتي قد أذنت لك ودخل معهما تحت الكساء فأقبل عند ذلك أبو الحسن علي بن أبي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت عليك السلام يا أبو الحسن ويا أمير المؤمنين فقال يا فاطمة إني أشم عندك رائحة طيبة كأنها رائحة وقي وابن عمي رسول الله 
وقلت نعم ها هو مع ولديك تحت الكساء فأقبل علي نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتأذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال له عليك السلام يا أخي ويا وصي وخليفتي وصاحب لوائي قد أذنت لك فدخل علي تحت الكساء ثم أتيت نحو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا أبتاه يا رسول الله أتأذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بضعتي قد أذنت لك ودخلت تحت الكساء ولما اكتملنا جميعا تحت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بطرف الكساء وأوما بيده اليمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء أهل بيتي وخاصتي وعامتي لحمهم لحمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويحزنني ما يحزنهم أنا حرب لمن حاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وعدو لمن عاداهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل صلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليهم وأذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان سماواتي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدحية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضية ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسري إلا في محبة هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تحت الكساء فقال الأمين جبرائيل يا رب ومن تحت الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أهل بيت النبوة ومعدن الرسالة هم فاطمة وأبوها وبعلها وبنوها اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتأذن لي أن أهبط إلى الأرض لأكون معهم سادسا وقال الله نعم قد أذنت لك فهبط الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله العلي الأعلى يقرئك السلام ويخصك بالتحية والإكرام ويقول لك وعزتي وجلالي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدحية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضية ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسري إلا لأجلكم ومحبتكم وقد أذن لي أن أدخل معكم فهل تأذنني يا رسول الله وقال رسول الله وعليك السلام يا أمين وحي الله إنه نعم قد أذنت لك فدخل جبرائيل معنا تحت الكساء فقال لي أبي إن الله قد أوحى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليظهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا فقال علي لأبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجلوسنا هذا تحت الكساء من الفضل عند الله فقال النبي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واصطفاني بالرسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيتنا ومحبينا إلا ونزلت عليهم الرحمة وحفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلى أن يتفرقوا فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وفاز شيعتنا ورب الكعبة فقال النبي ثاني يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واصطفاني بالرسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومحبينا وفيهم محموم إلا وفرج الله هما ولا مغموم إلا وكشف الله غما ولا طالب حاجة إلا وكذ الله حاجة وقال علي إذا والله فزنا 
وسعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فازوا وسعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة سورة مبارة الفاتحة Um, thank you, Asim, for that wonderful recitation. Um, <clears throat> we're going to stay. Um, we're going to stay in Mwanza. I'm going to call upon um, Shahid, Asim's brother, uh, to recite Surah Yasin. Um, an introduction to Surah Yasin. Um, as you know, it is referred to as the heart of our Holy Quran. It's incorporating divine guidance on reaching one's full potential. Uh, regularly, regularly recited for its benefits for those who have passed away. Um, it is a chapter of great importance for the living if we really want to know the real, the real meaning of life. So I'll now um, over to Shahid um, for the recitation. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Yaseen Wal-Qur'an al-Hakim إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل لذيذ رحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنزل آباهم فهم غافلون لقد حك الكون ولا أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في عناك مغلالا فيل الأسكان فهم مكمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم صدا فأخشيناهم فهم لا يفسرون وسواء عليهم عن ضرط من لم تنذر حم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع ذكر وخشى الرحمن بالغيب فبشر بمغفرة واجر كريم إن نحن نحي الموت نقطوا ما قدم وعفى رحم وكل شيء نحسيناهم في إمام مبين وضرب لو مثلا أسحاب القرية إزجاح المرسلون إذا أرسلنا إليهم أسنين فكذبهما فززنا بصالس فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء أنتم إلا تقذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما لنا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولا يمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أين زقرتم بل أنتم قوم مصرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة نجم يسأه قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجر وحم محتدون وما لي على عبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أتخذ من دونه آلية إن يريد الرحمن بزر لا تغني أني شفاتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني ذل في ظلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفري غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المخرمين وما أنزلنا لا قومه من بعده من جن من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة لل الإباد ما يعطيه من رسول لله كانوا من يستحزون ألم يروا كما حلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محذرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحيينا وخرجنا منها هبا فمنه يعقلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وناب وفجرنا فيها من الهيون ليقولوا من ثمره وما عمل قويديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأضواج كلها مما تنبت نازو من أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلق منه النهار فإذا هم مسلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تكدير الأزيز الأليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عادك الرجون الكديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك الكمر ولا الليل السابق النحار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أن حملنا ذرية في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يرتبون 
وَإِنَّ شَأْ نُغْرِقُمْ فَلَا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْقَذُونَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنَّا مَطْوًا إِلَى حِينٍ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَمُتَّكُمَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَمَا تَأْتِيهِ مِنْ آيَةٍ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَنُطِيعُ اللَّهَ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَتَمَّ إن أنتم إلا في ذلال مبين ويقولون متى حاز الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذاه من الأجداس إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مركدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذاهم جميع لدينا محذرون فاليوم لا تزم نفس شيئا ولا تزمنا إلا ما كنتم تأملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وزواجهم في زلال على الأرائك متكيون لهم فيها فاكهة ولحم ما يدهون سلام قول من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أحد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم أدوف مبين وعني بدونه هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد ظل من قنجبيلا كثيرة أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم تعدون إسلوها اليوم بما كنتم تخفرون اليوم نختم ولا أفوائم وتقلبون عيدي وتشهد أرجل بما كانوا يقصبون ولو نشاء لتمسنا على عين فاستبقوا الصراط فعنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم ولا مكانة فما استتاهم مزيا ولا يرجعون ومن عمر ننقصه في الخلق أفلا يقلون وما علمناه شيرا وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينزل من كان حيا ويحك القول للقافرين أولم يروا أن أخلتنا لهم مما ملت عينينا نعما فهم لها مالكون وظل الله لهم فمنها رقوب ومنها يقولون ولهم فيها منافع مشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينسرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محذرون فلا يهزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يؤمنون أولم ير الإنسان وأنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خسيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسيا كلقه قال من يحل إذا ما وحي رميم قل يهي الذي ينشاها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم للذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخزر نارا فإذا أنتم من حتوقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بكادر ألا أن يخلق مثلهم بلا وهو الخلاق الأليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يكون له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ولقوت كل شيئا وإليه ترجعون اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد سورة البركة الفاتحة بسم الله Asant um, Shahid uh, for a lovely recitation. Um, now we have the recitation of uh, Surah Mulk. Um, Surah Mulk is the 67th chapter of our Holy Quran uh, and giving guidance to uh, humanity for the purpose of life and death. It's particularly recited for the benefits for the deceased, um, but it's also a reminder to us all that uh, heaven awaits those who are the most God conscious. Um, so, can I call? Call upon Muhammad Ali Himani to recite Surah Mulk. Muhammad Ali.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بهد الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن وملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق السبع سماوات تبعك ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرجي البصر هل ترى من فتور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب اليك البصر خاسيا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيها وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين واتدنا لهم مذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم مذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سميع لا شيكا وهي تفور تقعد التميذ من الغيث كلما ألقيا فيها فوج سألهم غذنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلا قد جاء نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نذى الله من شيء إن أنتم لا في ذلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نأكل ما كنا في أصحاب سعير فترفوا بذنبهم فسوكا لأصحاب سعير إن الذين يقشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وجر كبير وسيروا قولكم عوي جهروبه إنه عليم بذات السدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناك بها وكل من رزقه وإليه نشور أأمنتم من في السماء يقصف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أأمنتم من في السماء يرسل عليكم حاسبا فاستعلمون كيف النذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير ولم يروا إلا تيري فوقهم صافات ويقبضنا ما يمسكهن إلى رحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينسركم من دون رحمن إن القافرون إلى في غرور أمن هذا الذي يذككم من أمسك رتكه فلجوا في التو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبنا لا وجيه أحدا من يمشي سويًا لا سرات مستقيم قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم سماء والأبسلة والأفيدة قليلا ما تشكرون قل هو الذي ذرأكم في الأرض وإليه تشرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل إنما للم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلما رأوه ذلفة سيئت وجوه الذين كفروا وكيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيت من أحلقني الله ومن معي أو رحيمنا فمن يجر قافرين من ذاب عليم قل هو الرحمن وآمنا به وعليه توكلنا فاستعلمونا من هو في ذلال مبين قل ريت من أسبها ما هم غور فمن يأتكم بماء معين صدق الله علي العظيم سورة المباركة الفاتحة فمن نانا كشو فازو Thank you very much, Muhammad Ali. That was a, a wonderful recitation. You would have made your nana very proud. Um, our, our next reciter is none other than uh, Brother Muhammad Abbas Karim, uh, um, who will be reciting a marthia uh, in the honor of our Ahlul Bayt, 
alayhim as salam. So without further ado, without further ado, Brother Muhammad Abbas. Asantum. Before I begin, can you please uh, recite a Surah Fatiha for the Marhum? Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Ar Rahman ar Rahim. Maliki al Din. Surah Al Din. I've been requested for two kalams, inshallah. So I'll present one uh, on Bibi Fatima and one on uh, Imam Ali. Uh, from the eyes of Bibi Zainab, salamu alayhi wa sallam. Baraya ta'jili zahuri imam zamana ba'u zibulan salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ya Fatima Zahra, ya Umme Abiha, Ya Fatima Zahra, Ya Umme Abiha, Kya Zulmo Sitam Tum Pe Tham Akhdum Ay Alam Din Shab Me Badal Jai Agar Sahel Tera Gham Kyo Karna Zadar Karna Hamata कम है जो करे हशर तलक घेरे आओ परसा या फाते मजहरा या उम्मे अभिहा आलम के लिए आया नबी बन के जो रहमान कुंबे पे उसी के ही हुई कैसी कयामत मोहसिन की शहादत का सबब बन गई उम्मत जो हुर्मत का बात था उसी दर को जलाया या फाते मजहरा या उम्मे अभिहा या फाते मजहरा या उम्मे अभिहा क्यों फर्श गमे फातिमा जहराना बिछाए क्यों फर्श गमे फातिमा जहराना बिछाए जब खाक उड़ाती थी हर एक समत हवाए थी नोहा कुना शहर मदीना की फजाए जलता हुआ दर आपके पहलू पे गिराया या फाते मजहरा या उम्मे अभिहा और वक्ता पेश करूं सलमान लिखूं कैसे कयामत का वो मंजर सलमान लिखूं कैसे कयामत का वो मंजर हक मांगने दरबार गई बिनते पयंबर बदबخت शकी बैठा रहा तख्त के ऊपर पढ़ते थे मलाइक भी सरे अर्श ये नोहा है या फाते मजहरा या उम्मे अभिहा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम मुहम्मद वाले मुहम्मद अल्लाह सुब्बा زینب نے دی صدا اللہ کا واسطہ بابا نہ جائیے 
زینب نے دی صدا اللہ کا واسطہ بابا نہ جائیے ہر سو ہے آج کیوں بدلی ہوئی فضا ہے بابا نہ جائیے تاریخ ہے جہاں سردا سما یہ رات ہے جی یہ رات ہے جی گھبرا رہا ہے دل کرتی ہوں التجا بابا نہ جائیے نانا بھی اب نہیں اما بھی چل بسی پردیس میں قیام پردیس میں قیام ہم سے وطن سے دور کیا ہوگا کیا پتا ہے بابا نہ جائے پھر زندگی ستم پہلا ہے اس پہ غم چھوٹا بھی ہے سن چھوٹا بھی ہے سن کیسے اٹھائے گا کیسے اٹھائے گا صدمہ یہ با وفا بابا نہ جائیے وہ وقت ہے قریب بدلے گا یہ نصیب ارے بابا تمہارے با بابا تمہارے با کر کے ہمیں اسیر لائیں گے عشقیا ہے بابا نہ جائے جب گھر اجڑ گیا اور رائے مرتضا اور شام غریبا میں شام غریبا میں زینب کے بین تھے سر سے چھنی ردا بابا نہ جائے آباس اور حسن رخصت ہوئے علی آفت کی تھی گھڑی آفت کی تھی گھڑی کل سوم غش میں ہے زینب نے کی بکا ہے بابا نہ جائیے زینب نے دی صدا اللہ کا واسطہ بابا نہ جائیے برائے تعجیل ظہور امام زمانہ باواز بلند صلوات Uh, sent there, Muhammad Abbas, that was wonderful, eloquently put. Your mercy as always are very uh, heart-wrenching and touch everyone. Uh, and may you continue. Um, um, we're now going to call upon um, uh, Hajj Hasnan Rajbali. Um, my brief introduction will do him no justice. He is a household name. Um, so I'm now going to call upon Hajj Hasnan Rajbali. to deliver tonight's lecture, 
please welcome him with a salawat ala muhammad wa ala muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي انزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاه والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش افضل الانبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو استق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وال محمد All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I begin in his blessed name and I thank him for giving us this opportunity to exist and to be given the opportunity to recognize the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we have a tragedy and a loss in our families as we are commemorating today the 40th of Marhum Khushru Ghulam Ali Fazal, you find that we question the integrity of our existence <clears throat> And then we also question the value of what we have given on this earth. And then of course, the most important one is we question why did Allah take our loved one? And why did he take them then at that moment? These are questions we always ask and we will never stop asking these questions because intrinsically we are so bound in the interconnections of God's mercy that if we don't ask such questions then we're really not cognitive intelligent beings and therefore it's important for us to acknowledge the fact that when we're questioning the valid the validity the integrity of life and the integrity and the validity of our performance and the function and the purpose behind all this uh it is proof positive that there's value in everything that we're doing And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Surah Al-Hashr verse 18 which I started with Allah says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah oh you who believe <coughs> be god conscious ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah wal tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat li ghad and take account of yourselves of what your soul sends for tomorrow qaddamat li ghad and be god conscious and Allah says and Allah repeats it by the wat taqullah be god conscious twice in this verse Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'malun indeed God knows what you do so of course Allah has placed us on this earth for a very short period of time i mean when we are talking about our marhum today and i've done so many as such and many people do especially in this period of covid in the pandemic some of us have lost dozens of family members at least i know within my family relations i've lost at least a dozen in the past year either because of covid or because of other reasons and whether it's covid or its other reasons death is imminent upon us allah says kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut every cell shall taste death and death is imminent and when it does strike us sometimes we are shocked at the age of the person who left this world and we say oh my god this person was so young when my cousin just passed away in new york and he was younger than 60 years of age and we say oh he was so young and sometimes you find people children die in the wombs of their mothers a 14 year old boy just died in a car accident uh, a week ago in iraq while visiting for ziyara a 14 year old who comes from our town here died in a car accident you know the mother is in a serious condition in the hospital so the precarious nature of life in the fact that time flies so quickly that those who are in their 80s and 90s will swear that they were just born yesterday and that they've aged so quickly and they reminisce when they look at those young teenagers and say yesterday I was this teenager 
So the precarious nature, the ever evolving speed of life, and of course the, uh, the nature of how death takes the human race, it doesn't discriminate. You know, the rich don't live necessarily longer than the poor or one region versus the other. Of course, sometimes there are statistical differences, but in the general sense, you'll find that um, people die, get killed at various levels. And we always question, oh Allah, why did you create us? Under such circumstances, when you gave us this potential life with which to serve you, to worship you, and to promote good. As Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Allah is telling us very clearly in the Quran, you're the best in the community when you promote good and you forbid evil and believe in Allah, right? Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. And yet, some of our lives are taken so quickly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yaseen, as, as was just recited, liyundhira qawman ma unthira aba'um fa mughafilun. So that we warn you and your forefathers so that you're not heedless, ghafil, so that you're not in the state of ghafla. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us very conscious within our own dimensions to recognize, to question the integrity. And sometimes we give wrong answers when we try to validate the reasons of why we exist. Sometimes we become very despondent, we become very disappointed and we give up on hope, we give up on faith, we give up on Allah. We stop praying, we stop fasting because we feel, well, life is too precarious, it doesn't make sense. And then there are those who say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah has given us the potential and the fact that the world is so precarious, so slippery, that at any time, within any second, within any day, we can lose our lives. And Allah says, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٌ No self knows what they will earn tomorrow, money-wise, affairs-wise, deeds-wise, and of course, our hereafter. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى And Allah confirms that this verse, by the way, in Surah Luqman, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٌ And no self knows on which land they will die. We could be traveling. We could bequeath our graves to where it should be. Sometimes we're in a distant land, but today we have the luxury of transporting our bodies to those lands that we wish to be buried in. But Allah says, you don't know on which land you will die. That precarious nature leads us to a fork by which to come to conclusion in life. Do I throw the towel in and become very disappointed? And given the fact that this contagion like COVID can kill me within a day, couples who've been together all their lives suddenly don't even see each other. And now they have to bid each other goodbye if they're able to on the phone. Funerals are done electronically now because of you know distancing. That precarious nature, do we lose hope? And this is the question we must discuss on this Arba'een for the thawab of the marhum uh, because I think when we leave this world and we're able to ignite and make others reflect with our departure, we become conduits of Allah's rahmah. See, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can warn us, right? Innama tunziru man dhikr wa rahman bil ghaib. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us and he's telling us that beware, beware, beware. You can get into all kinds of philosophical debates and you can talk about uh, you can talk about the um, we can talk about the um, the nature of life and how it's precarious, and we amass wealth or not, we become popular or not, the nature of our lives are decreed on a very short period of time, transient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending us 
a message that your obligation on this earth is to consider that can you come as an accident? This is fundamental. There are people who still don't believe in Allah. There are people who have given up religion in Allah. There are people who follow cult leaders. I, watch, I was watching this new show that came out about Rajneesh, you know, the Rajneeshis. And you watch this where educated attorneys, scientists, doctors, deeply um, blessed with knowledge of the worldly matters, foolish enough to follow a human being who has such limited knowledge with such limited explanations of life that they are fooled to join these people, give up all their wealth and dedicate their lives and don one colored dress by which to follow like zombies. And you wonder how, how does a human being with such levels of academic achievement reach a level of such stupidity to follow somebody in a, in a commune unless there's such precariousness within the individual, such weakness that we are so vulnerable that it takes somebody with a golden tongue to fool us into following some kind of a ritual or a cult and dedicate our lives till our death without questioning the integrity of the person, without questioning the eternity of life. These are questions that only God can answer and the religion of Allah through prophetic guidance and scriptures like the Quran, in the Quran, Quran that guides you to be modest, upright. It tells you the value of yesterday, tomorrow, the eternity. If we don't take this into consideration, there is nothing for us on this earth. So to answer simply, why did Allah create us on this earth? He did not create us for this earth, 100%. He created us for the next world. Allah always tells us this. Allah says, بَلْ تُعْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَقْرٌ الْمَالُ وَالْبَنُونَ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ خَيْرٌ عِنَّ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا خَيْرٌ بَتَرْ in the hereafter, Allah says, your deeds, your good deeds are better for you than all the glitter of this world because you were not made for this earth. And if we're not convinced, then let these commemorations of the chalismo, the 40th, or the funerals of our loved ones become a poignant reminder that we're next in line and that our funerals will soon be discussed and we will vanish from the history of this world that even our great grandchildren will, will not know our first names. Our great great grandparents, if I ask my audience, name, give me the name of your great great grandparent. Unless you're in genealogy or you've maintained it, the 99.999% of the world population does not know it. Yet that same person who's the blood who brought me to life, I don't even remember their name. Who am I to propose this idea that my name should be remembered? No, Allah says, I'm the one who remembers your name. Allah says to the Prophet, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Allah raised the name of the Prophet. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ It is Allah who remembers. It is Allah who maintains. It is Allah who records. It is Allah who will talk to us. It is Allah who is managing my affairs. So. We have to submit to Allah. And therefore we ask the question that on this earth, you have tyrants who come and kill and raise a city and kill people and burn their homes and stab them and behead them and murder them by the thousands, by the millions. Today, wars take place where bombs drop and thousands of people die at one time. And we ask the integrity of life. What is life? Why create me? and put me under such situations where I can vanish in a second because of some person who has the power to annihilate, or I can vanish with a contagion that is invisible to my naked eye. What is it? And Allah answers that you recognize me, that when you were in the state of difficulty, when you were in the state of loss, 
And when you started to think of who you are, and you came to the realization that there's a higher power, and then when you looked around and you saw beautiful things that you coveted, that you wanted, and then at the same time you saw ugly things that you despised and abhorred, did you recognize that there is somebody who put them there? And did you recognize that those which you liked and those which you didn't like were put there by somebody for a reason? And that those which you didn't like actually was good for you that you didn't like because it was bad for you if you liked it. And shaitan, of course, is a master of making us like things that are bad for us and making us dislike things that are good for us. But that self-recognition, wattaqullah, be God conscious, is at this level to say that in the times of difficulty and in the times of joy, in good times and in bad times, did I turn to Allah? This is very important to understand. On Judgment Day, Allah's first and fundamental question will be that. Did you turn to me? Whatever faith you are, Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. Whatever faith you are, did you turn to me? Did you seek me? Did you have hope in me? Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ that Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam and he says to him that tell قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ O you worshippers who have gone astray in your commitments, in your responsibilities towards maintaining good and forbidding evil if you've crossed the line and violated that Allah says, don't lose hope. لا تقنت من رحمة الله. Do not lose hope in my mercy. For it is the mercy of Allah that is the ultimate driving force and the ultimate reason why we even exist. Allah says, وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ For the mercy, it is why Allah created us. And in this commemoration today, I want to explain to all of us, never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose hope in his mercy. His mercy is crucial. I don't care if there is a gun on our heads. I don't care if our entire family has been annihilated. And you know, when I watch these shows and I read books about empires, the Mongol Empire and the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire and the Abbasid Empire, all these empires that came, they were driven by greedy, self-centered, megalomaniacs who wanted power and they ruled and they conquered and they robbed and they stole and sometimes they united communities you find that all of them lacked the ability to guide because they were so self-centered that they didn't have the capacity to give good uh, exhortations, good advice to societies. Of course, there were scholars who came, who taught, who were philosophers. But you will not find in the annals of history people who were learned, visionary, who had certainty in faith and were the ultimate role models than prophets and imams. And I study that all the time. I compare I will look at Charlemagne, I will look at Caesars, and I will look at Confucius, and I will look at Buddha, and I will look at all of them. And some could be prophets, as you know, like Buddha. But the prophets we know, the ones Quran mentions, you find that their qualities were bar none, second to none. And that culmination of the prophetic mission of teaching us how to survive this very turbulent world, this very unpredictable world, you will not find better guidance than with them. And the Holy Quran is the ultimate elixir to calm us down. What we have revealed in this Quran is a shifa'a. Is a rahmah, 
It's a, it's an attorney. It is your guide. It is your medicine, shifa, and mercy. And I see it. I'm living in the West. I grew up in the West. Uh, I'm seeing the global politics, the geopolitics, the powers of the world today, trying to smash the religion of Allah, trying to silence the truth, and they align with evil leaders, vicious, evil, self-centered thieves in order to silence the message of Allah. And those who are rising from the depths of this uh, ignominy, the depth of this viciousness that is being promoted, and they're rising, and they're winning, and they are putting fear into the hearts of these tyrants. I wonder, where did they learn this from? Who taught them how to subvert, how to silence, or how to destroy the evil forces? We go to Karbala, and Imam Hussain salam says, Ridham mi qada wa taslim an li amri. We are satisfied by your decree, Allah, and we submit to your affairs. So when we have problems today, when we have losses, and when we want to be given consolation, tell me, who can give us better consolation than our Holy Prophet himself? when he had such difficulty establishing the finality of the religion of Islam that started with Adam, that he was so focused that while the enemies pounded him in Mecca and in Medina, and he spent you know, many years, years and years of battle defending Islam in order for it to benefit us today. And then his family, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima al-Zahra salamullahi alayhi, Khadija, his wife, who financed the finality of Islam, financed it, gave everything she had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her generation, the generation of Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. These are not ordinary people. These are the kinds of people we must hold on to. We must study them. We must talk about them. We must name our children with them. We must infuse that spirit and knowledge that they had into our generations. For I am convinced there is no other way to survive the onslaught in the precarious na nature of this world. The culmination of all the prophets together, coming to the Holy Prophet, when Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ Indeed, in your messenger, in your prophet, is the best role model. For those who want to return to Allah and believe in the Day of Judgment, and they remember Allah much. That that culmination is in Imam Ali alayhi salam. Amir al Mu'minin al ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The culmination of a man that the day he opens his eyes in the Kaaba, at the Kaaba, in the Kaaba, he sees none but the Prophet himself. To the time when the Prophet closes his eyes, he sees none than Amir al-Mu'mineen. And those years of Imam Ali alayhi life, up to the age of 63 when he became Shaheed, he was nurtured by the Prophet. And the culmination, the combination of Adam alayhi salam all the way to the Holy Prophet, the essence of all the purity and the guidance of God is in Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam and his blessed wife Fatima al-Zahra and her blessed children, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Zaina, Kulthum. You can see it. When Zainab alayhi salam is told by Ibn Ziyad that I destroyed your brother. She says, ma ra'aytu illa jameela. I see nothing but beauty, rahmah, and I see mercy. She's teaching us that when you live in this world and you lose and you have problems, take us as role models. For no matter what loss you have, you cannot aggregate it 
with the loss that they had. And I say this, I say this in universities, among non-Muslim audiences, when you talk about the alleged crucifixion of Christ, when you look at Prophet Musa alayhi salam, when you look at these great religions, when you look at Gautama Siddhartha, when you look at you know, Siddhartha Gautama, who is the Buddha, when you look at all great leaders and they suffered, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus suffered a lot. Musa alayhi salam suffered. Ibrahim alayhi salam suffered, no question. And they were prophets. They suffered more than any of us. But if you take from Adam alayhi salam all the way to the last messenger, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself says, no person on earth has suffered more than I have. And his family has suffered with him until today. That nobody is being meted out the sufferings of maintaining liyundira qawman so that they warn you. Their warning abilities to give you this warning has price. That they're warning us and teaching us that if there is one thing that will hold you towards a line a positive way is when you're in the times of difficulty, don't lose hope. Hold on to Allah and use us as a role model and keep reminding each other about the events that took place, especially in Karbala and about the Fatimi of how Fatimah Zahra alayha, left this world as a teenager and how the Holy Prophet left this world and how Amir al-Mu'mineen left this world and how Imam Hassan left all the Imams, all the 11 Imams and talk about the 12th Imam, his struggles of today and how he guides and maintains and patiently awaits for the command of Allah to come back to finalize that promise of Allah when he says, It is the desire of Allah to make you the oppressed, the inheritors of this world, and to make you the leaders. But that command demands in us a proactive transaction with which to be grateful with which to commemorate with grace and with which to constantly reflect this message. So today, the Arba'een of a pious mu'min, Marhum Khushra, Ulam Ali Fazal, who came to England in the early days of migrations from our Khoja community. When our Khoja community was migrating to the United States, to the European countries, to different parts of the world, and as you know, the majority of our populations migrated between the UK and Canada and some in the United States like us. And our obligation is that, our obligation is that when we migrate, we don't give up on our deen. For as you can see, when we have Hijrah, when the Prophet migrated from Mecca to Medina, the first thing he did was he established a masjid. Masjid Quba, as you know, is the oldest masjid. The first thing he did when he arrived in Medina, he immediately erected a masjid, a place of worship. Because the condition of migration, <clears throat> which is mentioned in the Quran, is that if you're going to lose your faith or your life is not secure, <clears throat> then you must migrate. And the angels will ask, was the world not wide enough for you to migrate, to get out of that? potential loss of faith, that when we migrate, we have to never forget Allah <clears throat> and we must encourage those around us. <laughs> Invite the people to the way of Allah. <laughs> With wisdom. الحسنة, with kind exhortation. And use sound argumentation when you talk to people of other faiths or even your own people. In Marhum, when he came to Stanmore, the community didn't really exist at that time. And he prayed that there should be a gathering place for our community 
where religion of Allah is mentioned, where the next generations are warned and the existing generations can maintain their faith. And he was one of those pioneers. And it's very heartwarming when you speak about such people that they have established or they have promoted the establishment of such organizations. I know my father, when he came to New York in 1971, he was one of those persons who established the community of the Shia uh, Ithna Shari school, the, the Ja'fari school, the Muslim community in New York and some other members of the community also, because it's an obligation. And then it becomes a thawab jariya where every member who enters those vicinities and the echoes of those people that now spreads out within the community, within the neighborhood of people who even were non-Muslims, who became Muslims, or those of our community members who have forgotten Allah, who came back to Allah, this is the, the actual obligation that was left to us by the Holy Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that our obligation is to bring people closer to Allah. And Allah mentions this, you know, in Surah Al-Hajj, in 78th verse, see that wa takunu shuhada ala nas so that you are a witness over the people. And the Prophet is a witness over us. So I think it's very important for us to never give up this responsibility. And the fact that we are talking about the 40th of a person, and we always ask, what is the 40th? Quickly, with the limited time that I have. The 40th is an interesting number. And if you study the Quran, the 40 number is interesting. There are 40 days, 40 months, 40 years. Uh, the number 40 is, is very profound in Islam. By the way, even in Christianity and in Judaism, because that was something that Allah instituted in the human race within his religious um, injunctions that the 40, the number 40 has a significance. On a cursory level, as I mentioned, we have been created intelligently to recognize the mercy of Allah. And when we do recognize it, we will become the best servants of Allah. Because Allah says, you know that he has made He has made a calling that if you are grateful, we will increase for you the mercy. And if you reject it, then you will be punished with a severe punishment. So our objective is to recognize the mercy of Allah. Even in all the losses, in all the negativity, I see people who argue vociferously against Allah, against the mercy of Allah, by using the, the prevalent negativities that exist in the world. And they use this as an example to say, you see, God is not merciful. He allowed all these negatives to happen. And I go back to that initial point that I made, that look at the agents of Allah, look at the representatives of Allah. Nobody received more negativity than they did. Nobody. Yet they were the best servants of Allah. So this argument people use in negative ways to look at the glass as half empty is a self-destructive approach because you end up emptying the entire glass, which is foolish. What is important for us to understand is that in order for us to recognize the mercy of Allah, it takes time. It takes allocation of energy. It takes collection of data. So 40 is exactly that. So the family of the marhum, the daughter, the sons, the children, the spouse, the grandchildren, all need to validate and account. What did this marhum do in my life? What was his value? The children should value because we tend to value things when we lose them. It's ironic, we backbite, we have negative behaviors against each other. But when we lose somebody, we go to the funeral and we do Salat al mayyit and then we say to Allah, I witness this person was good. Alhamdulillah, that's good. But why don't we do that before this person dies? So the recognition of the mercy of Allah 
demands time. And Allah says maturity in the human being under the system of trials reaches its maximum potential at the age of 40. Quran mentions this. At the age of 40, when they say, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walide. As you know, Prophet Sulaiman also recited this verse, but Allah is also mentioning that when you reach 40, that you should recite this, that my Lord invoke in me gratitude. Awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walide and my parents. And I want to talk about the importance of parents, for I know Marhum was a parent and his children and his grandchildren, you know, are commemorating, remembering and recognizing this. And it's important for us to recognize the importance of parents. And within this few minutes that I have, first and foremost, recognize the mercy that Allah created us whether we live for a second on this earth, and even if we died at stillbirth, God made me into somebody. And that somebody will exist on the Day of Judgment. The Messenger وسلم, said, bring children into the world, for they will be a witness and there will be a mercy upon you. And that somebody now has the potential to exist eternally forever. That's very important. Allah did not create us for this world. And Allah did not create us to go to hell. Allah created the human race and all creations, in fact, to enter paradise. That is decreed in the Quran. But when Allah gives us free will, then we dictate our own destiny. And if we indulge in foolishness, in rejection, in kufr, then we create hell for ourselves. And hell is self-deserved. It's never given to us when we don't deserve it. Quran mentions this. And 100% Allah even calls it, hell Allah calls it as reward. For if the individual of people like Muawiyah, Yazid, Fir'aun, Saddam, Hitler, people like these who committed such heinous crimes, they wanted hell. So Allah will reward them with the hell. But we were not created for hell. We were created for paradise. And our fathers who have left and our mothers who have left, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises them forgiveness. Even this ayah, by the way, When we send warnings, and those who are conscious of my presence, Allah says, see, of the unknown, who believe in the unknown as the marhum did, Allah says then, فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ And then give them the news that there is forgiveness and a great reward. أَجْرٍ kabir, A great reward. SubhanAllah. So we must console each other that those who have left us, our fa fathers and mothers who have left us, that Allah has promised them forgiveness. Allah has promised them high stations. But when we exist in this world, if we recognize the mercy of Allah and we work hard to bring people closer to Allah while we bring ourselves closer to Allah and we don't give up on the mercy of Allah, then Allah will raise us to high stations. The Marhum wanted a place to have Jama'ah ah and Jum'ah ah prayers. And mashallah, he died on Jum'ah. Ah. So Allah is saying to us, when you want something, I give it to you. And the fact that I'm here in the United States speaking about this reality of migration, of people who established our communities. When I come to London and I see the thriving community, our communities, the Islamic communities, the Shia, the Ja'farid, the Muslim communities in the UK, I know there were people who came early on who never gave up on that vision and who planted that seed to say that the community should grow. So what they have left behind is upon us now. For tomorrow, we will leave behind for the next generation to continue to expand this mission of Allah till the return of our blessed Imam, and then till the day of judgment. So I advise us all that let us be kind to each other, especially our parents. Allah says, 
وقضى ربك ان لا تعبد الا اياه وبالوالدين احسانا in this verse by the way is the only verse in the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in one sentence the unity of allah and the kindness to appearance وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا And God has decreed that you do not associate anyone with Allah and be good to your parents. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا I want to expound on this. One would say that if, since Allah has told me to be good to my parents, does it mean that I should not be good to others? No. You see, the essence of mercy As I mentioned, recognition of God's mercy, the most tangible mercy is myself. When I touch myself, I realize God created me. This is my first proof. But when I look at myself and I say, thank God I am alive and I'm, you know, existing. But how did this happen? So my parents gave me that birth. My parents fed me. My parents nurtured me. So the essential, the, the, the nuclear recognition of God's mercy are my parents. They are the initial source in the tangible world of mercy. So I say, if we cannot recognize the mercy of our parents towards us, we will not recognize the mercy of Allah. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be merciful and good to our parents. But that's the essential root. And when we recognize that, then we will be merciful to all our children, our spouses, our in-laws, our neighbors, our friends, our community, our nations, people of other faiths, even our enemies. Because now I will understand the nature of Rahmah. So when people say that, you know, who should I be good to? People, many people ask me that question. I said, be good to all of human beings. Be good to the animals. Be good to even the inanimate objects. Be eco-friendly, take care of the trees and nature, for that is ibadah. So within our families, parents should be good to their children. Children should be good to their parents. We should be good to our spouses. Today, when you look at the divorces and the, the head bashings and all the negatives that take place, it's because we forgot the rahmah of Allah. If we truly understand the mercy of Allah, then we will understand why Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when a man comes to him and starts vilifying him and calling him bad names, but the Imam recognizes this, this man was from Syria, he was a stranger. And he knew that this man had received negative information from the Umayyads. But rather than respond negatively, Imam says to him, you are a stranger in town, you're tired, come home have lunch with us, rest, and then we will continue with this conversation. And the man was shocked with this love and affection and this hug that the Imam gave him to say, come, while you vilify me, I'm kind to you. Allah says, wa maghfiratun min sadaqatin adha. Kind speech and forgiveness is better than charity followed by injury. And we must be good to each other. And I give this message to myself, to my family, to all around me, and to this audience, and to the family of the bereaved, that be good to each other, forgive each other. For if there's one thing we will want on Judgment Day, it will be forgiveness. We will be seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will question us that while you were alive, how much did you forgive? How much istighfar did you indulge in? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا How much istighfar did you give? How much forgiveness were you indulgent in? When we have enemies, even within our families, put them, put their names and look at that and say, how can I seek forgiveness. How can I forgive this person? And how can I ask for their forgiveness? And if I have wronged them, how can I be right to them now? For before Allah takes our spirit, this is crucial. And why am I focusing on this as a general message? Because I remember when the Marhom's daughter sent me his biography, 
you know, Marhum Khosrow's biography, that he was always forgiving people. He never looked at the negatives of people. So in his spirit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this blessing in his name, that we remind each other, that we should forgive each other. And I cannot say more than the fact that within our families, especially when marriage takes place, and when there are in-laws who get into the relationships, that sometimes we carve out territories. And I must say this, because I see it all the time, even here in our region, that when we marry, we marry the families. And when we marry our spouses, their parents become our parents. And I've seen beautiful relationships. And I say, this is Islam, where we see our in-laws as our own parents. And if you ever want to see harmony, when you look at Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when you look at Imam Ali alayhi salam, when you look at the prophets, you will see that their spouses, their, their families were one family. If you ask our children today that, you know, do you love your grandparents? And the child will say, which one? Because grandparents now are maternal and paternal. Notice how the child cannot separate the two. The love of their mother's family and the love of their father's family are equally as foundation and platform for them. For if they're going to grow with love and relationship, they have to look at both sides equally. Notice that we have an obligation to teach our children to love their parents, to love their grandparents, to love their uncles, to love their aunts. Today, family relations are the real weak link that breaks the rahma, silatul raham. I'm speaking from my own heart within my own family that if we don't love each other and forgive each other and embrace each other and forget about the past of what A, B, and C did to me and look at the future and say that tomorrow I may visit your funeral and I don't want to put on a face pretending that I liked you. I want to do it now so that when Allah takes you before me or if Allah takes me before you, that we both will be a witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah we forgave and we loved them and we considered them like ourselves. We considered them our family because if there is one thing shaitan promised Allah it is dissension and discord. I will beguile them all. How? Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Come and create fitna between the families and destroy. In our communities, if you look even within our jamaats, we have to be united. Within our Islamic institutions, we have to be united. Between Sunni and Shia, we have to be united. Between Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist, we have to be united on that front to promote the right and the good. May Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah. And I remind us all that Arba'een of Imam Hussein alayhi salam should be enough evidence of that love and forgiveness that Imam Zain al-Abideen, Hussein bin Namir denies him water in Karbala. And Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam, while he's in chains, his hands are burning, the heat is excruciating, the head of his blessed father is on a spear, the head of his blessed brothers and his family um, is, um, is on the spears and he's holding that. And he's saying to Haseen, I need some water. And Haseen spills it, he doesn't give it to him. Imam looks up in the sky and he's grateful. This is a lesson for us all. He looks up to the sky and he's grateful. That is a reminder for me today that Hassanain, when you have an enemy, when you have somebody who you don't like, when somebody has wronged you, take a lesson from your blessed Imam and find a reason to be nice to them. This same Hassan bin Namir is now wandering in Medina after Karbala and he is thirsty now. 
and the Imam has water in his hands, he pours it and gives it to him. Why? Because the Imam is my teacher and he's showing me that regardless of what happens, never stop loving humanity. Never. And there's no greater teacher for me, no greater lesson for me than that. That when I see the head of Imam Hussein salam, being smacked by Yazid with a stick, I look at my father today and I say, if somebody hits him, my heart will hurt. Can you imagine Imam Zain al-Abideen Zainab salam, having to witness? Zainab is witnessing her brother's head being smacked with a stick by Yazid. But the Imam is saying, you see that? I gave this head for you so that when you listen to my situation and you look at this vindictive family of the Bani Umayyads, they take a lesson from us that never lose focus to penetrate this dark heart of these evil doors and put light into them and be loving and caring, sharing, giving and forgiving. For that is Islam. That when Zainab salam returns to Medina, her husband doesn't recognize her immediately because she had gone through such pain. And I leave it for that, that we as a community should remember these events. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Marhum Gushru's departure while he's in Barzakh, that Allah elevate his status. Oh Allah, grant him forgiveness, peace, tranquility, and grant him the ability to meet his loved ones and grant him high stations in the hereafter, as all those who have left us before our relatives, that Allah forgive them, as we will beg for forgiveness from you when we have left this world. And Allah, we forgive those who are with us today. Oh Allah, forgive them all. And Allah, bring rahmah to the families and cure those who are in the hospitals today, dying of COVID or dying of other diseases and make their lives while whatever time they have left on this earth, fruitful and baqiyatu salihat so that it continues to grow for them eternally. May Allah give us tawfiq inshallah ala la'natullah ala al-qawmi al-zalimeen. May Allah destroy the evil doors and may Allah elevate the blessed ones, I mean, inshallah. Surat al Mubarakat al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum jami'an. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asantam. Haji Hassanain. A wonderful lecture, very inspirational. Um, as always, uh, you leave us with a lot of food for thought. Um, and I think there's lots of things that we're going to take away from this lecture. But I think the, the, the most important thing is what you said, never lose hope in Allah. Um, it's, been a, it's been a very testing year. We've lost a lot of loved ones, but there's always hope when we have hope in Allah. Asantam, may Allah bless you. Um, we're now um, going to our next item on the agenda, uh, which is Ziyarat Ashura, where we will pay salutations to the martyrs of Karbala. So I'm now going to call upon Muhammad Mahdi Ismail um, to recite Ziyarat Ashura. Muhammad Mahdi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا خيرة الله وابن خيرته السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سينة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا سار الله وابن ساره والوسط المنصور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك 
عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت بقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وأضمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساسا ظلم وانجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم المقامكم وأزالتكم المراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله المهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشيائهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سلمكم وحرم لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبة ولعن الله ابن مرجانة ولعن الله أمر ابن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسفجت وأنجمت وتنقبت لقتالك يا أبي أنت وأمي لقد أرم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب السارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك من موالاتك ومن مراءت من من قاتلك ونصب لك الحرب وبن مراءت من من أسس أساسا من جعل عليكم وأبرع من الله وإلى رسوله من من أسس أساسا ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشيائكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وأتقربوا إلى الله ثم إليكم موالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالمراءة من أعدائكم والناس من لكم الحرب وبالمراءة من أشيائهم وتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرم لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم وعدو لمن عاداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ولا تقل البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثمت لي عندكم قدمة في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغ للمقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني ظلم الساري مع إمام الهدى ظاهر الناتق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطي بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبة مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقام هذا مما تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي مماتي محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم 
تباركت به بن أمية وابن آكرة الأكباد العيد من العين على لسانك ولسان النبي صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف في نبي صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد المعاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين سلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم ولا منك الأذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقف هذا وأيام حياتي من المرات منهم واللعنة عليهم وبموالاة نبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليه السلام اللهم لعن أول الظلم ذا المحق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم لعن الإصابة التي جاهلت الحسين وشايعت بايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعلنا الله آخر الأهل مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ظلم باللعن مني وأبدأ به أولا ثم لعن الثاني والثالث والرابع اللهم لا يزين خامسا ولعن أبين الله بن زياد وابن مرجان ومر ابن سعن والشمر وآل ابي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة اللهم لك الحمد وحمد الشاكر لك على مسابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم رزقني شفاعة الحسين يوم المرود وثبت لي قدم سنق عندك مع الحسين أصحاب الحسين الذين بدل مهجرهم ضن الحسين عليه السلام اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الفاتحة Uh, Hassan, thank you, Muhammad Mahdi. Um, before we draw a close on tonight's um, uh, gathering, um, can I call upon um, Hassan Rajpal um, to say a few words on behalf of the family? Hassan. Can you hear me okay? Hussain? Yes, I'll stand you fine. Salam alaikum all. Um, Alhamdulillah, a beautiful 40th Jalismo program. Um, I'm sure Mahroom Dad will be uh, delighted with the way the program's worked out. The speeches have been amazing, the recitations have been excellent, and the words of wisdom from Sheikh Hassanin Rajabali will, I'm sure, ponder for many days and weeks to come. So I guess I wanted to uh, bring it back to dad and maybe share some notes, share some thoughts on a, a more personal level and a lighter note, if I may. Um, marking the chalice more now um, has given us some time for adjustment, some time for reflection. And through these programs as well, we've, we've shared some nice stories about the Marhum and I, and I thought I'd add a few before we close uh, for today. Um, 
And I think I'd like to do that in two parts. So, so one thing I'd like to do is talk about his qualities in terms of the personality he had. He was very, very easy to, to talk to, to get, along with, get along with, he's very likable. Um, partly because he had a huge sense um, of humor, a sense of wit, always looking to crack a joke, uh, make fun of somebody, usually me. Um, but it always just lightened the atmosphere and, and just instantly made him, made him likable. But also what I, I tend to notice that he had a great sense of uh, perspective. So whenever I tended to debate items with him, debate situations, he'd always pick out the most relevant components of that and ask me to discard the other irrelevant components so I could focus my attention on what was really, really important. And I think that was a, a great quality. Now, Hasnain, uh, I know, shared a, a, a really nice story about um, his driving and how dad took him driving one day and that, that kind of really stuck with me. So I thought I'd share a little story with you as well on this particular note. Um, I remember during dinner one day he was explaining this to me. So a friend asked him to mediate between two groups of people, uh, almost two gangs, if you like. This wasn't in the Shia community, which is not as uh, exciting as that. But two gangs that kind of established this rivalry and it almost got to the stage of bloody conflict, if you like. So it's a bit like a scene in Godfather or Narcos. And he was asked to come and mediate. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you want to do this? I don't know, but somehow he accepted. And he was explaining when I got there, uh, there was these two groups of people literally stood opposite each other, facing each other. And you could almost sense in the atmosphere, it wasn't looking good. So he sat down and in, invited them to sit down alongside him as well. And, and said, look, before we start, um, can I just point out three things? The first is I'm here to help. Um, but I'm also a heart patient. Looking at you two, you guys already in my heart is up to notch and I'm slightly concerned. So can I ask you as a favor, whilst I'm here to talk calmly and respectfully because I also want to return to my family in one piece. That's the first thing. The second thing here is a friend has asked me to come here to help but I can assure you that whilst I'm here, I will show no bias and I'll be completely impartial to whatever we discuss. And thirdly, I want to encourage all of you to talk openly and honestly. I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to listen to each other and find some areas of compromise because this way we'll accomplish whatever the issue is in a peaceful way. Now, suffice to say the meeting went well and they parted on good terms. I don't actually know what was said, but I remember thinking to myself, what a great way to start a discussion that was rife with conflict. Um, I remember thinking as soon as he lowered the temperature, which seemed to be bubbling, it really made the foundations of a good discussion. And this story kind of resonated in the sense that I should remember this for future use via this story. And now maybe you can too. The other thing I'd like to talk about is how Mahum lived his religion. So he was always very particular about the obligatory requirements around prayers, fasting, hajj, wafats, etc. But just through his daily life, keeping things in his affairs in order, asking about people, um, asking about people's health, well-being, what he can do for people, all those kind of things was incorporated into part of his life. And again, two stories, if I may, just uh, relay. Um, the first one was a car accident, actually, on his way to hospital. So again, he was telling me about a lady who had crashed into him, um, and caused a little bit of damage on his car. 
it happened to be an old lady who was driving and she immediately apologized and explained her lapse in concentration was due to the fact that she was still pondering a diagnosis she had from the hospital about her health and she was very much distressed. So dad listened to her story and immediately told her and said, look, the damage to my car is, is not so bad and the car is old anyway. Why don't you forget about this, go home and concentrate on whatever it is your diagnosis is. So I remember thinking to myself at the time that why is that so gullible? How can he believe this story? And in the end, the insurance company would pay for the damage anyway. So he said on hearing her story, he believed her and it could have been true. And that's all that mattered. It was an opportunity to do some good and he didn't want to pass that by. And again, it was another memo to self. Look for the opportunities, wherever they may arise, they could be anywhere and every day. The final story was more personal to me. It was on my daughter's birth. My daughter Sagina was born some 18 years ago. And I remember when she came home, dad was gleaming with, with a smile and he explained that our children, and Ali, I'm sure this applies to you equally as Sakina, but he explained our children, in this case Sakina, will be our salvation. Now, I was already in a good mood, but this perked me up even more. I was all ears and asked him to explain. So rather than going to the Quran or Hadith, he watered it down just for me. Hasnain, a beautiful bond has just been created. Now you can try to explain it or understand it, but you won't be able to, it's divine. She will force you to marvel about God's creation. You'll think about love in a different way, You'll think about sacrifice in a different way. You'll learn caring and nurturing on a whole new level. She will change your life and she will be your legacy long after you've gone in the same way that you will be your parents. Now, wow, that was deep. And I have to confess, I didn't really think about it too much at the time, but for somewhere how the words did stick with me and I'm still deciphering them to this day. And it's those kind of conversations, I guess, I will miss, along with the lighter ones, along with the um, laughs we had. Um, but fortunately, I've got many memories to bank away and reflect on uh, for the journey ahead. I'm sure you guys will have similar stories and memories too. Inshallah, over time, we can share more as, as we go on. So with that, before I hand back to Hasnain, one of the things I did want to do in, on behalf of the family is, first of all, thank you all for attending this Majalis, the previous ones we've held. It's been such a good um, occasion to hold, even in the COVID times that we can all unite and gather and um, commemorate um, together. It's been a very, very warm thing to do. So thank you for that. Thank you for all the organizers who have put effort into putting this together, the reciters, and also, especially from mom and all of us actually in the family, thank you for the hundreds and thousands of messages we've received. I'm sure you can appreciate it's been difficult to reply to all of them individually, but they are very, very welcomed, uh, very much appreciated. So uh, a huge thank you to all of you for that. Thank you for listening to me, uh, to me and Hasnain, I'll pass you back. Thank you, uh, Hasnain, for your, uh, for your words. And uh, you're very right in saying we all have fond memories that we will share um, and pass on to the generations to come. Um, again, um, thank you to everyone for attending. Um, before, before we finish, um, can I um, just say um, a special thanks to, again, all the reciters, not only for tonight, but all of the reciters over the last 40 days that have taken out time commitment from their busy schedules to, to join us uh, and to commemorate um, Kushronkel's passing. Um, I really wanna say a special thanks to Brother Hasten Kaki, um, who has really organized um, our uh, technical side and organizing the YouTube, Zoom links and everything else. He's been a, 
um, a, a great asset to us, uh, very, very silent as always. And, and those members from Hazri will, will, um, will confirm this, that he is um, a silent gem. Um, thank you, Brother Hussain. Um, lastly, um, as we come um, to the end of tonight's program, um, can I ask you to recite um, one Surah Fatiha for our beloved Marham Kushru uncle, um, Kushru Ghulam Ali Fazl, and for all those people that were with us at the beginning of uh, beginning of this year, 2020, um, and have passed away, whether it be through the COVID, um, other ill health, um, or whatever the, the reasons may be. May Allah bless them all, forgive them, give them a, a high place in in uh, in in the hereafter, um, and may Allah bless our coming year 2021 with his blessings um, and may he uh, listen to all our du'as and bless us all. So for one last time for tonight, can I ask you to recite a Surah Fatiha for Marham Kushru Gulam Ali Fazal and Kul Marhumin Al Fatiha. Uh, son, thank you everyone for attending and remembering us in in your du'as. Uh, and inshallah, um, we will uh, we will meet again very soon. Hopefully, uh, inside the parameters of our Imam Bargas. Inshallah. Asan, uh, take care. Alvida. Uh,